Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Cecil here, bringing us a video here today, bringing you guys a Photoshop tutorial to create your own fun little abstract, sort of whatever the heck the title says, video here today. And uh, yeah, I changed it up a little bit. I'm trying to put a little speed art in the beginning from the original concept. So this is the original, start to finish about 40 minutes. So you guys can see how I was created and stuff like that. I think it'd be pretty fun for you guys. And uh, just a little different, I guess, uh, quality thing to my little videos and whatnot. So hopefully you guys do enjoy. It is a little bit on the tedious side, but hey, I mean, like it's still, I guess the more time you put into it, the better it looks in my opinion. So yeah. Yep, I do have a new mic by the way, it's called the Audio Technica AT2020 from the Blue Snowball, so hopefully you guys hear a difference, hopefully you guys enjoy the difference, and hopefully like you have no more mic issues, like, right, like, like, okay, okay, we're gonna keep going with that though. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video, don't forget, 200 likes on the video equals a secret download below, and yes, I know there's videos out there that do not have the secret downloads, because either I lost a file, and that's just pretty much it, it's just, I lost the file. But uh, what I might just do is just like sort of either redo it or just sort of give something else away. So regardless, of course guys, two likes on the video, you can just see it down below, and I'll talk to you guys in a second, because I'm gonna do the video, okay? Let's do it. All right guys, so let's go ahead and get this thing started. So basically, it's not too hard like I said once before, but it's more or less sort of tedious in the, I guess, to get this really cool concept, of course, it's gonna take a little effort, so don't get too bothered about it and don't really find a uniform way of doing it. Have fun with it like I'm going to right now. I'm, I'm obviously not gonna have the same exact outcome, I guess, technically wise or like sort of uh, effect wise, but of course, the whole concept itself is gonna be the same. So let's go ahead and get this thing going. So if I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this, I do have the color uh, that I, colors that I use, excuse me, so the, I, I use an orange and a green for my two primary colors before I actually put a CC on. So for the orange, the hex code is located right here, uh, F79F1D. The green is 81B43F. There's a lighter shade of the blue than the background that I have currently, which is 2C3542. And then a darker shade of that blue at 1E2531. And the, of course, the background hex code is 131 a24 so as long as you have all the hex codes you can pretty, pretty much have the same sort of i guess uh concept that i do um or color wise i guess color scheme that i do okay let's go and get this thing going um we're gonna go ahead and use the rectangle tool to start this thing off so basically what i use the rectangle tool for is to basically of course make a rectangle so if i click in the middle of my uh <clears throat> my document page so if you guys do not know already of course if you don't know how to use your own or use rulers basically if you were to press Control R on your keyboard, right? Control R, just like so you can see the rulers at the top and the left hand side of the actual document uh, in Photoshop come, I guess, come through. So basically what you do is you click on the ruler itself, you pretty much guess where the middle is, and then once you kind of guess the, vic the vicinity, like right here, I'm gonna say, if you know someone right here, you'll feel it snap just like so. Once you feel it snap, you can let it go. Same thing for the top for a horizontal line pretty much just find where the middle is and then let it snap and then you'll figure out where the middle is very very simple so now what you're gonna be able to do is click on your crosshairs right in the middle of your actual banner design between the rulers hold alt and shift oops click and then hold alt and shift it makes a perfect circle for you and keeps in that same exact orientation so with this I'm gonna make a nice perfect circle or excuse me square and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, where's the uh, where is all right what we'll do is we'll leave We'll just leave this this, this color for now. So I'm gonna leave this, this color for now. What I'm gonna do is gonna control uh, control T to free transform it. I'm gonna hold shift when I rotate it. That way it kind of turns in intervals of 15. That way I can get a perfect 45 degree angle, which is a perfect, I guess, diamond after you make your little uh, square, right? Press okay. I'm gonna make a little bit smaller. And so the reason why I made a different color is we're gonna have to use two duplicates of this. One's gonna be a duplication for basically the stroke itself. And then one's gonna be the fill. And I'm gonna show you guys why that's, I guess, a thing. Because of course, you're gonna wanna, I guess, differ, uh, differentiate, differentiate, di di where's the word I'm looking for? Differentiate, there we go, I got it, I got it, your boy got it. Uh, the two different squares that are obviously gonna be similar in color, but yeah, I'm gonna show you basically. So if you make a duplicate, control J and keyboard, very simply of the uh, rectangle that you just made. And now if you wanna, cause we're gonna change the color again right now. If you wanna change the color, all you have to do is go back to the tool that you just used. You can then select the fill up top over here. And then you can select the color that we recently used. If you don't want to do that, you can, of course, just use the color overlay. And the only reason why I want to do that is so I can make sure I can select this color here. So, uh, is this the best or is this the darker one I need to use? I'm going to use this one. So, the, the, I guess the, the second darkest uh, blue is the one I'm going to use. And then once I've done this, I can go ahead and turn on the other uh, rectangle here, right in the same exact spot once it was before. Turn off the fill, though. Just like Illustrator, you can turn off the fill. The first little, I guess, slash through is basically says no color. You want to select that. Go to your stroke path and make sure you turn the stroke color on. And just so you guys want to know, I use about three points on mine. So I put it on three points, and then basically I'm going to go ahead and find the color that I use, 
which was the orange it should be one of these oranges here because i of course did this once before so recently used colors i'll just use this orange for now and hopefully that's the same orange as that one so the reason why i'd use those strokes and all that sort of different things is because now i can see myself looking really good i got nice sharp edges of my strokes and it's it's way better than just using i guess a regular stroke and the layer path and it'll save you some sort of time of, of course having the pen tool out i guess the little points if you guys want points right so like i said three points uh stroke and then one has a fill with a different color in them and then basically this is the whole entire port uh part where you're just sort of gonna figure out how to throw in some uh color and some different shapes in here and kind of make it nice and abstract and nice and fun okay so to do that i'm gonna start off with rasterizing this stroke right here now before i do that actually as well is i'm gonna make a uh, I guess a duplicate of this I'm gonna make it red just so I know that that is a duplication and if I want to ever go back I can do that so with this new little uh, or I guess not this new but this duplicated stroke I'm gonna make it rasterize that way I can get rid of uh, some of the parts around or erase the parts around it so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is if you want to use the masking tool you could but I'm not gonna look for me making a mistake I get I thinking I'm thinking mistakes right now in this sort of era or sort of doing something you're not quite sure you want to do is fun it's abstract it's gonna look cool anyway right so I'm gonna basically pen tool out something over here. I'm gonna pen tool out maybe like this over here. Yeah, we'll do that. So basically I pen tool these two things out. I'm gonna now right click, make a selection, press okay. This will basically make a selection of both these two paths that I just made. And I'm just gonna simply press delete my keyboard just like so. And that way I get myself a nice cool like, uh, I guess like a, almost like a dotted line stroke going around this square here. But of course it's not dotted line. It's just, it's just simply enough. It's uh, we just cut it out right so now i'm gonna do i'm gonna make a new layer and let me turn off this thingy here because i do have that on and you won't be able to see my new layer button i'm gonna make a new layer right click clipping mask this and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna change this uh, color here this primary color to this green here and what we're gonna do take our pen tool and we're gonna simply just select some parts on this uh stroke here just like that it's basically what you did before when you cut it out what we're gonna do here though is gonna right click make selection and what i can do is just basically quick fill oops let's make sure you select both of them by just making sure that none, none of them are selected individually and what you want to do is pretty much press alt backspace it will quick fill that color in that's on your foreground color on your new layer that has also clipping mask to the stroke layer and that way you have two different tones of color now playing with each other in the stroke so what we're going to do now is we're going to just basically make a duplicate of that nice little duplicate we had we had before right we're going to make this a little bit smaller here and we are going to basically make this inner uh i guess uh how do you say stroke green let's just make sure we so basically all you want to really do is sort of go back and forth back and forth between each stroke color and sort of figure out your way there so for this stroke in the middle here is what i'm going to go ahead and do is i'm going to rasterize this again i'm going to pen tool out basically where i didn't cut out before i'm not going to cut out the same exact spot here right i'm going to cut out maybe over here and not too much i'm gonna cut all over over there and i see all this is cut out so i'm gonna cut out something over here not too much but that's something pretty much good right there right make selection of both these uh two mat uh two pen tooled pen tools what do you call it selections there we go and then press delete very simply right and then you got some more just sort of cutouts right there as well so now i'm gonna go ahead and do is put in some more shades of color in here to make this look a lot more fun a lot more filled and a lot more sort of dealt with i guess you can say right and before i actually do that i'm gonna also make another new layer clipping mask this in there and where it's green i'm gonna make it orange on the inside here so let's just take maybe some of this and make that orange there as well so before i do that change this primary color the foreground color to orange or whatever color you guys are using but make selection and then simply just alt backspace to quick fill the uh, color in there we go now once we have this, I'm going to go ahead and start experimenting with other things, like I said before, start filling in this color. So what I have been basically ended up doing myself was I made a new layer, right? I used my pen tool and I basically went around the entire square here. Now you could, of course, use a fill, but for me, the reason why I'm not using a fill is because I didn't do the entire square in like one color. What I did was I basically cut half, just like so. I'm going to cut through, come up here as well. Now we cut out. It does not matter. It'll look cool. It doesn't matter whatsoever, right? So I'm going to fill this in with a darker shade, which should be this one here, or a lighter shade, excuse me, which should be this one here. Press OK, and it wasn't. Let's, uh, or no, I have this, I gotta put it above this one, there we go. So make sure, of course, I'm gonna name this base square, that way we can make sure that we know to put things above that one, right? So that's what we're gonna do for this one here. So once I have that there, I can just basically now find myself looking a little 3D, right? It looks pretty cool. What I'm gonna do now as well is maybe let's cut maybe like this over here and make this a darker shade as well so let's do that now let's go ahead and make a new layer take this over here 
and let's go down here and we kind of follow the path as close as we can right that's pretty close and let's go through the middle so I'm gonna put my rulers in here get up there as well and then connect it there and I'm gonna make this a uh, fill color in actually I, I want to fill a different color let's fill this in with this color here maybe that's gonna be the same color so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just double click change the color like this and maybe that'll look eh, it's of course is the same color in the background let's see what would look best maybe if I didn't do the entire thing so of course it's gonna be trial and error for myself as well because I'm not trying to copy the same exact thing I'm trying to do exactly what I did before however though let's go ahead and maybe cut this out right let's cut like everything out besides okay I got it let's cut this to this this to here let's cut like that out maybe right and then we're gonna make this color let's just make it that color why not right so as you can see it's not gonna be something that's gonna be like straight in you're gonna figure out like hey I like this hey I don't like this is or that's exactly what's gonna be it's not gonna be something you're gonna just automatically know what you're gonna want to do so for me now I'm gonna start putting in some more strokes in a different I guess way basically being the pen tool right so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically find let's do this let's find something here let's put one like there so what I'm gonna do is pen tool out lines I, I can pen tool out lines or I can find myself sort of figuring out maybe like an outer or excuse me like an inner uh rectangle I'm not I'm of course doing it freehand you can do it freehand uh, what I was once doing before in the speed art you probably saw in the beginning was sort of lowering I guess uh, shrinking the square itself to a I guess a smaller size than what this square is and then penciling out but it doesn't matter for tutorial purposes I'm just gonna kind of just show you guys what I'm talking about which is just pen tool out some lines that are inside that are outside stuff like that let's pen tool a line over here as well maybe I'll try to get it as straight as possible as soon as, soon as my eye can as straight as my eyes can adjust to uh, we'll say like that is pretty okay right something like that so the way I made my stroke lines were all you have to do is change your brush settings so if you press B on your keyboard you'll find yourself with your brush in your hands you can basically right click go to your size and change this from whatever it is to three that's basically the same amount of points that we use for the actual stroke over here as well and also change your hardness from well, from whatever it is to 100 make sure it's at 100 and once you have this done make sure you then change your uh, your color here right your foreground color to whatever color you want to fill in here for example I'm just gonna fill in this orange here so I'm gonna press ok so I'm gonna do is on a brand new layer this is a brand new layer correct yep on a brand new layer I'm gonna uh, click P on my P, uh, pen tool right P for my pen tool there we go and then right click stroke path once you have this stroke path here yours is probably gonna be on pencil uh, on the drop down of course just drop it down press brush and then press ok and then right away you're gonna see I can just delete the path you're gonna see a three-pointed sort of hardness brush the same amount of size that your stroke is and the code that you chose for your foreground color which is pretty freaking cool and it's very 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 handy as well so I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make of course another layer clip mask it and put some green in where it should be green I believe so I'm gonna say this can maybe be green here like this little part can be green let's say this can be green here because we have some green here and just kind of match Mitch match it up but of course make it somewhat organized in a way but of course it's still all in all it's abstract right make selection make sure that this working color is green all backspace quick fill it in and there we go now we got some more color going on so, so you, you sort of see this whole thing build up and right now I'm gonna just gonna figure out what I can do next maybe we'll just add some uh let's just add some weird shapes in different spots basically make a new layer take my pen tool Let's add a nice dark uh, triangle here, maybe, right? I'm gonna add a nice dark triangle, fill it in. And by the dark, I mean the shade that's in the background here. There we go, and I got some nice little stuff there. So if you find yourself hovering over the actual stroke, just basically take your layer and then bring it down until you find yourself where you wanted it to be above the shape and then also behind the stroke itself. You'll find yourself doing that a couple thousands of times. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna figure out maybe maybe here as well like it's a, there's a lot of one shade here let's just take this and maybe go through like right here connect it and let's try to find a nice shade of blue which would be maybe this one that would look the best I think it looks okay right so once you sort of find yourself your nice little groove that you're going for you'll find yourself just loving it a lot more than what you're doing right now it's just very basic stuff here but what I'm gonna do as well is add a little uh, for me I added a little like rectangles here or squares here um, so I'm gonna do the same exact thing I'll take the, the duplicate that we had in the beginning make a duplicate of it 
and we're gonna press Control T. We're gonna make a nice small one. Let's put like a nice small one, like maybe in the middle. Why not? And if you really want to, I didn't do it in my example, but you can make some regular sort of squares here and then maybe make different uh, squares or excuse me, triangles in these little squares, different shades of color or you can sort of mitch match it put some squares behind the actual entire base square so like this right trying to figure something out there but for me what i'm going to do is basically show you what i did before which was same exact square oops same exact uh let's uh press enter really quick and then free transform it put a nice diamond like there i put one like a row over there i put one like here i made some smaller ones i made some bigger ones I actually made some of them different stroke sizes as well. So if that's something that catches your eye, you can do that as well. Um, let's just do someone here. And just because I know this is too much orange in this corner here, I'm going to put, uh, make this green. Actually, we're going to go ahead and just go back to this, go back to there and then change that color to green. Now we have a green square over here, right? We're looking good. Okay. And then let's just put maybe another one. Uh, let's just put like outside maybe. Control T for you transform it. Right, and then we'll put maybe another one like over here. And we'll make this one orange. So go back to the shape, show color, recently used colors. We'll use the orange one there. And then perfect. So this is gonna be incredibly tedious. I'm not gonna personally be able to like show you guys the entire thing, but I gave you the quick, nice gist of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed out this part of the actual tutorial and show you guys at the end what to do, of course, because I'm not trying to take up the entire time. This is 16 minutes and we're only on the first square. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly just show you guys what I'm gonna be doing with a nice little speed art. So enjoy that really quick. All right, so I didn't do too much. I didn't like speed art a creative, like an incredible amount. I just did a couple little things just to sort of like fill out the spaces. I don't want to take too much time on this, of course. Um, but I'm just going to fix a little bit of things before I continue. But what I actually ended up doing in my original concept was I basically selected all the sort of shapes that I have in here. So basically group them all together if you wish to, but I'm not going to just press simply just shift click on all of them. So click on the first shape that you made and then hold shift click on the last shape that you made, press control J on your keyboard, which will make a duplicate of them. And then you can press control G on your keyboard or control E either way you can merge the group or just make a group just like so. So you can have two different uh, squares here. What I ended up doing was control shift T or excuse me, control T to free transform, hold alt and shift, shrink it down a little bit. And I gave myself maybe a different sort of, you see how this line wasn't perfectly lined up. So that makes it look awkward. I'm going to make sure I put this little copy of this. I can keep it in there in like the middle there. And I also ended up doing was hold alt drag and maybe another copy and then put it in a different way, like a different angle. Maybe what's messing me up here is that there's too many squares in the inside. So I'm going to cut this one out here. So you're going to find yourself doing this a lot as well. And if you can't find your actual layer or your actual shape or whatever, you can use the auto select button. Some of you guys may put this on an axis and you got to kind of figure out like, why can't I move the shape or move the layer that I'm moving on my own? Like if I click here and I'm, I'm clicking and moving, I'm like, why am I clicking that shape? I want to, I want to select the layer and move it. It's because you have this thing on. So I'm going to do, I'm going to find that shape by like clicking on it just like so. It should be this one right here. And it is. I can now rasterize a layer, take my pen tool and let's just get rid of like, maybe like this half of the triangle plus like another half. Let's just take this out. Let's delete that. And that's also, oops, let's also go ahead and delete that half of the triangle as well. Right, connect it, make selection, delete that there. That way it doesn't look too multiplied or duplicated and it looks a little bit better in my opinion that way. Now, if you want, if you didn't want to have two duplicates, you don't have to, because I only had one duplicate in my actual original. But for me, let's just make that nice and small. Oops, let's get rid of that because we don't want that there. And just bring it like right there and I'll say that's okay, right? So what I ended up doing was I had two main squares. So I'm going to do one more square in the background here just by easily taking this base square, duplicating it, making it big with control T, just a little bit bigger. And then exactly just repeating the exact same thing that you guys did before. So it's not going to be too difficult. I'm just going to simply speed out it one more time for you guys. I'm going to do the exact same thing I did in the middle, sort of pencil out my nice little uh, stroke line or duplicate the layer itself and then put a stroke line on that shape and then sort of rinse and repeat the exact same thing. So like I said, it's kind of tedious, but in a way it just, it looks uniform and abstract at the same exact time, which is really fun. So let me go ahead and get this thing going for you guys.
All right, guys, now that we have completed this little portion of this, I basically, like I said, did this exact same thing. Basically, rinse and repeat the same exact thing on the outside. Now, for me, I sort of didn't put too much on the outside because the inside itself is also inside this outside square, technically, right? So all you have to really do is just figure out where you want to actually, I might do one more thing I can see. I want to separate. I want to at least separate these squares here. So I'm going to put like something right here. Maybe you guys saw the same exact thing. As soon as you guys saw, you're like, dude, you're not separated. Maybe we saw the same thing and maybe we're fixing it right now. Um, so let's like do like that. Let's just do like that. And let's do like that for now. We'll make this entire part this color, maybe. All right. All right, cool. I think we're good. All right, sweet. Kind of have a nice little separation between these little big squares or bigger square and little squares. So, okay. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm basically group everything together that we just ended up doing. So everything that you've just did, group it all together. I'm just going to call this phase one. So just P1. White, uh, right? We're white. <laughs> okay. And right now I'm just going to basically show you guys what to do next, which is sort of the whole backing part. Because this whole next part is really nothing more. You don't have to pencil anything more. You don't have to fill any more shapes. You're pretty much good to go after this. So this is the easiest part of the tutorial. Okay, so press control J once you have everything grouped together you want to take your copy you want to move it over Let's also move this behind the original We're gonna take our copy. We're gonna shrink this down a little bit Move it over here. We're gonna move another one like behind this as well again We're gonna change the orientation by just you know moving it around maybe in 135 degrees So it's not the same exact. Now let's still make sure it's a There we go and we're gonna find ourselves with like something like right here, maybe, right? Or like right here. I don't know. Like I just feel like making it maybe this maybe this uh make it a little shorter. Alright, cool. And we're gonna take these two copies here, move them over here as well. For me, I'm just gonna put a nice little, I guess, sort of like diagonal line going through. Cause what we're gonna do here is, is we're just setting ourselves up for, I guess, just think of it as once we add our motion blur to this, this is gonna look really, really cool. So the background is just basically gonna be a sort of like a throwaway in a second, right? So once you have this, I'm gonna say maybe a, maybe another square here and like another square here, sort of fill the space just a little bit. And then once you have this going on, you're pretty much okay. So as, as long as you fill the space with your duplicates, it's all right, it's all good. And your middle square is still gonna stand out. No one's gonna really notice that these are duplicates in the background here because like I said, we're gonna merge this all together right now. Just like so, merge it all together. Do we need to, we don't have to merge the background. Control J, Control E to merge everything together. Make sure we make the original different uh, color that we don't end up deleting it afterwards. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our filter here, go to th uh, blur, excuse me, motion blur, and change your angle to 45. The reason why I chose chose 45 is because as you guys know, we rotated on a 15 degree uh, ratio going around, right? And we also chose the angle, 45 degree angle for the square so that way it looks like a triangle and, or excuse me, I guess a rhombus in a way, or a diamond or whatever. And also, basically, every of these little stroke lines here are all going to be going in the same exact orientation, the same exact way. It looked very organized and very good. So 45 degree angle, 30 distance, just to make it nice and even. And we're going to press OK, and that's going to be sort of our little, I guess, background gist of it. We're not done yet, though. What we're going to do is we're going to end up taking our uh, eraser, or if you want to use the masking tool, you can. I'll just use the masking tool. If you use a black brush to then erase... Make sure you change your hardness and stuff like that, guys, to back to like zero hardness and a nice little good size brush here. And we're just going to go around and erase a little bit. So I'm going to erase something like right here. Erase this one a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a lot of it on the inside, maybe. And the reason why I'm doing this is sort of making, uh, I'm just sort of making like breaks into these little stre uh, streaks, I guess you would call them, right? And making sure that it doesn't look too uniform for the background. Something like that. Now I'm gonna get rid of all this for a second and just look at this alone. And I think we're okay on that part. So what I'm gonna end up doing is taking this duplication here or this blurred group here, throwing it behind the group itself. Also, of course, uh, removing all the other things. I just hid them for now. And sort of just now I'm gonna take some parts, hold Alt, drag it, and sort of find like a nice cool pattern I can put in the background just by simply duplicating and moving things around. Now, if you want to erase more, you can. I didn't erase a lot. Uh, I guess I didn't erase as much as I did before. But for what it looks like, we still got a nice little backing going on there. And we're we're pretty much good to go, honestly. So for me, I'm going to say that's okay. That's a pretty good solid. I'm going to press Control G on everything there to group that all together. And I can also get rid of all that now. Now, for future reasons, if you want to make more different or sort of a unique form of it, maybe take more time on this, you can, of course, make a different... Uh, inner square for you guys just make to make the background a little more I guess because you can still tell a little bit that it's the same exact thing But as well as you also can't because it's also blurred out So it really depends on what you guys want to do But this next part is all about lighting and color correction So we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer take our nice soft brush here 
And we're gonna choose the orange here. Uh, let's just use this. Let's choose an orange here from our little swatch. Swatch, there we go. And we're gonna click orange a couple times around this banner design, just like so. Right, a couple times just like that. Put on linear dodge add, lower the opacity down. Now, if you want to, I'm gonna say 50 opacity is pretty good. What I'm gonna do is press Control U on the, uh, the light layer itself. Take our lightness and just lower it down a bit. And if we want to tweak the uh, hue a little bit, we can do that as well. I'll say this is pretty good. That's pretty accurate. Let's like lower it to 45 or 49 lightness and that's pretty good, right? I'm gonna now do this one more time. This time for a green. So I'm gonna select the green that's here for the swatch. Let's make sure we select a nice little green in the middle as well. Put them one here, here. Maybe just like, just dead smack there maybe, right? I don't know, maybe like that. Okay, that's enough, I guess, splatting around. We're gonna go ahead and put on linear dodge add again. Lower this opacity down. Uh, do I need to mess around with anything here? Not too much. So I'm gonna say 30 opacity is pretty okay for this green here. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is really quickly just add a little text layer. That way we can just see what's going on there. Uh, abstract. I'm curious what you guys can do with the text. I always fall for like just putting regular sort of 2D text just right in the middle of everything just because like I don't feel like the text is the main attraction. But I'm curious what you guys will do. So of course once you're done with your uh, your example or, or your banner design that you've, you know, of course, took inspiration from here. Make sure you guys uh, send me the uh, what you guys got going on. You guys always do it already. I mean, just stop it. You guys are so nice. You're like, so nice about it. Um, uh, respectful, I should say. Not nice about it. Or respectful and professional about it. Like, hey, inspiration from Seso HQ. I appreciate that very much, guys. And I'm sure it'll get yourselves out of a lot of trouble yourselves as well. Um, okay. Cool. Now we got our text. So I'm going to make sure I don't mess around with that. So all the color, color corrections I'm going to do is I'm going to put it below my text just so I don't have to mess around with the, the weirdness. It's sometimes it's really weird when you mess around with your text and your CCs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a brightness and contrast, of course, uh, contrast. So we're going to lower our brightness, put up our uh, contrast. We might actually put up both. Let's actually put up both here. Looking pretty okay there. Right, all right, we're looking okay. Let's go ahead and just put one below the actual lights. That way we can put another one above the lights, see if the lights actually come out a little more. All right, they do, just a little bit. That's not terrible, let's just do that like that. Okay, so once you make it a nice little dark, so I'm, I basically put the lightness, uh, brightness and the contrast up on both of them. So on the first one, just make it nice and uniform, 20, 75 contrast for the first one. And then after the lights, I put another one, we'll just put it at 12, uh, 10. 10 brightness, 50 contrast, pretty good. So now we have a nice little darker scheme, nice high contrast looking project. What I'm gonna do now is the whole color portion part. As you guys know, I did not have my original color set to this, or I have my original color set to this, but they had a different CC, of course, a different color scheme after the end of it. And the way I did that, of course, is the color balance. Now, I changed my midtones, my shadows, and my highlights for all of this. It took me a long time to tweak it. I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna, I don't have my actual settings in front of me, but I'm gonna see if I can find a nice color scheme as well doing the same exact thing. Um, oh, I found that nicer purple tone or uh, pinkish tone that I got before. And if you just mess around with this, you get yourselves a nice, you gotta mess around with a lot. You can, I went back and forth with my colors, guys, but I'm gonna simply find a nice color scheme and sort of stick with it. It looks pretty cool, it's not, enough let's go ahead with like maybe something like this so once you get a nice color here for your midtones change to your shadows because it'll get more of these stuff here like this here this here all this sort of stuff that has like a, that darker tone in there it'll change that around for you guys and it'll give a nice little a different mix to it as well let's go with like mm, maybe something like that and then we'll change our highlights a little bit which will be like little brushes that we had. So it's kind of like, and all in all, you kind of sort of figure out the uniformity is actually correct in a way when you actually do your color correction. Um, let's just say like that color is pretty cool. Let me go back to our midtones, just change the entire color. I don't know. I think I'm gonna stick with this. I think I'm gonna stick with this color scheme. We'll just stick with it for now. Like I don't know. I don't have like I said my exact color scheme that I had in front of me, but messing around with this will give yourselves a really dope color scheme. So basically, what I ended up doing at the end of this was I actually use my chat for example, do my Discord chat. If you're not in there, the link in the description down below. It says like Discord. Join my Discord. Join that really quick because I have I always show my work and sort of ask for opinions myself. Of course, for my designers, and they said it's a little bit too flat. So what I ended up doing was I made a new layer. I took my pen tool and I basically looked for triangles in this composition. So for me, this one already sticks out. So I'm gonna pen tool this out really quick. We're gonna pen tool this, correct? Pen tool this, mm, we'll just follow a triangle out like that. 
right? We're gonna make a couple of them though. We're gonna find that one. We're gonna, I see one here as well, right? That's like a little triangle concept in a way or triangle shape in a way. I see one here. I'll take us the smaller one, go around there. And I will go ahead, maybe take this small one here as well, right? So I'm finding these little triangle concepts, or if you were using a different shape, like a circle maybe, or even like a just a longer, I don't know, just basically find a shape and stick with it. Make sure you go around the entire composition with that shape. And what I end up doing is really quickly just filling this in with a uh, default color, doesn't really matter what it is. So just gonna fill it in uh, with all backspace really quick. Oops, let's make sure that we select all of our shapes. Uh, make selection all backspace because we're gonna really do really quickly is make a uh, basically group everything together including the background control J control E to merge it all together now we have a nice little duplicate uh, duplication excuse me what I'm gonna end up doing is holding control clicking my thumbnail of here right so I it's just because I forgot to group everything beforehand but it doesn't matter once you click the thumbnail groups everything together it basically selects, selects the exact same thing that you just pen tooled out what you can do now is on this duplication here with which basically is everything else put together and on in one in one layer, I guess now. I don't know why I'm like hesitating to say it, but anyway, right click, make a layer, let's layer via cut, right? We'll delete this now. And what I ended up doing was I put this to, I believe soft light, and then lower the opacity down a little bit. It's getting nice little darker tones in there. So it kind of looks like this is, I guess, I, uh, more forward pushing besides this here. Uh, let's see, maybe we'll put this below the, the uh, color correction a little bit. So they have the same tone. So lower the opacity just a little bit. If you want to flip through, if you can, if you want to, I guess having a lighter tone is not a bad idea either. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to keep it on soft light. Cause that's what I did previously. What I ended up doing was pressing E on my keyboard for the eraser and then just deleting some of it a little bit right here. Deleting that a little bit Move over there a little bit over there a little bit. It's over there a little bit. So to make it less flat in the way it looks a little bit better in my opinion. So pretty much all in all, I guess I'm also pretty much done, right? I guess I would say I'm done. I, I can change my levels around a little bit, maybe. Let's make it look darker and pop up those colors a little bit more. Let's see. Let's see, it looks pretty badass there. There we go. I think that's pretty gosh darn accurate It's what I had previously. So a nice little levels to sort of finish it off. We're just sort of like a, I guess a, a brightness and conscious in a way, but also very a little more difficult to understand. Um. So yeah. I'm gonna say this is pretty freaking accurate and pretty good in my opinion. So I'm gonna go ahead and say we're pretty much done. Now, if you guys, of course, want to, you can add a lot more different things. Like I was sort of trying to figure out, you could probably saw it on my speed art in like, it was like a good 40 minutes, I would say. I was trying to figure out some cool, like, um, what do you call it? filter galleries to work with, to try to work with this. For me, if I was trying to make it even more than what it was, I'll take some of the shapes that I have penciled out, like something like here. Uh, I can pencil out some more triangles, like I said pre previously and then sort of fill it in with like maybe a pattern overlay, right? Maybe that would work for you guys. So let's just real quickly see what happens here. If I just quickly do that, fill it in with a color, lower my fill down to zero, double click, pattern overlay, and put some patterns in different spots, right? You see what I mean? It might make the concept flow a little better for you guys if you guys are just seeming it's too flat or something like that. And I think it's, it's pretty dang good. It, it, might, it might work, honestly. In my opinion, it does work. Uh, I find like that right one though. Let's just go with, dude, this is difficult. I might just go with this one <laughs> for now. But yeah, you see what I mean? Just add some like little uh, things in there. Just, it might work for you guys. Also the color correction is a little harsh. I can tell at the base at the end, we might need to lower some opacities down for these little things here. But also the color scheme is pretty cool as well, I think. So as long as you find your sort of groove, you find your color scheme, you find your, I guess, shape that you're gonna be using. If you might use the same exact square or whatnot. And also I'm kind of curious what you guys would do for the abstract or the, the text in the, the text in the middle, I guess. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the whole little setting. Hope you guys like my mic. And uh, yeah, I just hope you guys like it all together. And I'm gonna talk to you guys later. So, so HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. And before I go, don't forget, I'm trying to stream like every weekend now. So if you guys catch on those streams, we do portfolio reviews. Also, follow me on Twitter, at says we've got to, I guess, figure out when I'm going to be going live. Also, join my Discord if you haven't already. So uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. So, so HQ out. Peace.